If you do that, you'll be loved by my Father. That'll please the Father. And I too will love him and will do what? Will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Is that God honoring you? Yes. That God becomes more real to you than he's ever been in your life. Yes. That you see and know things about him that millions on the planet have no clue. Yes. Does he do that for everybody? Yes. No, he does not. In fact, just, just keep your place right there. They'll, they'll bring us back. But Isaiah 45, 15 says, Truly you are a God who does what? A God who does what? God is a God who hides himself? Yes. Somebody said, I thought he was a God who reveals himself. He is. <laughs> He's both. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. You hear people sarcastically, defiantly say, well, if God's true, let him prove it. Prove it to me. How about no? <laughs> How about die ignorant? Yeah. <laughs> what? You don't know who you're talking to. That's right. In my few years of walking with the Lord, this is what I'm seeing more and more. Uh, two or three years ago in particular, we started focusing in. Some of you that have been with us, you know this. I got revelation enough to pray and said, Lord, I, show me what's you and what's not you. He's been answering that prayer. And then beyond that, Lord, show us how to honor you. I want to know how to honor you beyond where I have. 
And in doing so, I'm getting more light of who he is and what he is. And every little bit more I see, he is so big. <laughs> he is so vast. And for a man or a woman that's been on the planet that long that don't know enough to cover the bottom of a thimble to get up and rail in God's face and go, show me. <laughs> they wouldn't exist unless he allowed it. And not just allowed you to live. How many understand he has to sustain us every millisecond if he just, if he just quit holding gravity? <laughs> Huh? If he just, the Bible said all things are, are held together by the word of his power. Why don't the planets just spin off into the regions of space? It's happening in some other regions. Why not the earth? We are sustained every millisecond by him. And those who begin to know him, they begin to realize who and what he is, and it affects you with a greater reverence. You, when you really begin to get in his presence, there are times, have you ever seen at the end of the day, maybe the sunlight streaming and those little specks, particles that are floating in the light? You feel like one of them at the base of the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> And you know that doesn't cover it either. He is so vast and, 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 and so big and so wonderful. And, and when you begin to realize that and you begin to act like that with him, it opens up your life. Because those that value him and esteem him, he, if you draw near to him, what happens? Come on, what happens? He, he will respond to you. But... God is not insecure, and he, has, he feels no need to prove to some scoffing blasphemer that he exists. If the scoffing blasphemer had an ounce of sense, he could look up in the night sky and realize yes. there's something here so much bigger than I got an idea of. Yeah. And until you can answer definitively what that is, how can you say it's not God? So to all those scoffers and blasphemers and unbelievers, for the time being, he hides himself yes. from them because it's their choice. Mm -hmm. But if anybody anywhere wants to know him yeah. and is not just mouth and empty words but means business in their heart, uh -huh. you and I can tell them exactly what will happen for them. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> What happened to every one of us? Every one of us that genuinely, sincerely looked up and said, Lord, I believe in you. Hmm? Come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord. Did he immediately, immediately become more real to you? Come on, are you listening? Did he immediately become more real to you than he had been before? Hallelujah. Amen. And you realize at that, no, that moment, you weren't waiting on him. That's right. <laughs> you weren't waiting. He's always been the same. Yeah. He's always been there. You weren't waiting on him. It was just you finally decided to show some respect and act like who you're talking to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Woo. Keep reading there in, in, in John. Go back there. Verse 21, he said, I'll let my, the one that, that really loves me and does what I tell him to do, I will show myself to him. I'll let myself be clearly seen by him, make myself real to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, a different Judas, he asked him, he said, Lord, how is it that you reveal yourself 
Make yourself real to us and not to the world. Isn't that what we've just been talking about? Yeah. Huh? That's right. That's right. Yes. How? And basically, Jesus said, I just told you. <laughs> See if it don't sound the same. But he didn't say, I just told you. He just told him again. Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, what will he do? Keep my word. He will keep my word. He, he'll do what I tell him to do. And my father will love him. And we will come and move in with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will make our, our home, our abode with him. Anyone, verse 24, who does not love me, does not observe and obey my teaching. And the teaching that you've heard is not mine, but it comes from the Father who sent me. I've told you these things while I'm still with you, but the Comforter, now he tells us how he's going to do it. Yeah. How he's going to reveal himself to us and make himself more real. It's by the wonderful person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. By the Comforter. The counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he's going to teach you all things. He's going to cause you to recall everything I have told you. Anybody believe this? Yes. He's going to bring to your remembrance everything I've told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the word. If you're experiencing his peace, are you experiencing him? Yes. Is he being real to you? Yes. yes. You're touching him. Yes. You're in contact with him. You're experiencing him. Yeah. We've been experiencing him, him in this place tonight. Yes. Yes. His presence is here. Yes. Why? Because we're not out in the street cussing. <laughs> denying that God exists. And we didn't have more important things to do tonight than to come together and worship Him and honor Him and sit down with the Bible in our lap and say, God, talk to me. And I will appreciate it. Glory to God. Huh? And those who do and those who will are going to find more about Him than people that don't. He's going to be more real to you than he is to other people. And other people can scoff and they think because God's not real to them at all, it proves that God doesn't exist. <laughs> How ignorant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's not how it works. Amen. Well, prove to me and I'll believe. Wrong. <laughs> believe and you'll find out. Yeah. Believe and you'll find out. Show some respect. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, somebody say it again. Just lift your hand. Say, thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify you. Thank you. You're so good to us. You're so wonderful. You're so holy. You're so awesome. You're so magnificent. So wonderful. So wonderful. Let me say this, these couple of things, and then I want us to just stand and praise Him and worship Him some more. Have you read your Bible enough to know that there is a phrase that appears many, many, many times, and it talks about the fear of God or the fear of the Lord? If you've read your Bible at all, you've come across that phrase many, many times. That is not just an Old Testament phrase. Hmm? Uh, Acts 9.31, they'll put it up on the screen for us. Acts 9.31, is that New Testament? The church has had rest. Are we a part of that same church? Throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria, they were edified. They were built up. How were they built up? Doing what? Walking in the fear of the Lord and at the same time in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they were multiplied. The blessing is a producing effect in their life. The fear of the Lord is New Testament too. In the book of Hebrews, 
fact, turn there with me on that one. Hebrews 12. He describes when God met the people on the mount and how he came down in fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the people saw and heard the manifestation of God. And what happened is it scared them out of their wits. <laughs> and Hebrews is referring to this. Hebrews 12 and verse 18. It says, You are not come to the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. You couldn't even see that mountain because of the, the whole thing was on fire. And out of the fire, God spoke. And they all heard it. And you know what they all said? The leaders came to Moses and said, please, please, you go talk to him. <laughs> we are afraid if he speaks again, we will not survive it. They were so scared. And so Moses did. He went up and God just told him. Now I know immediately you start talking about that and people say, well, yeah, but that's Old Testament and that's Old Covenant and we're New Testament and he's my pops. He's my daddy-o. <laughs> he's the same God. Yes. He was then. Amen. He didn't change. Uh -uh. Our access to him has changed. Yeah. Yeah. And our nature has changed. And it's wonderful. But he is no less awesome Amen. than he was then. And people who act so flippantly and overly casual about him are simply people who don't know him. That's right. That's right. Amen. You can be born again and spiritually be a three month old. Right. Yeah. Even though you're 75 years old in your body. Yeah. And not have a clue who your father is. Yep. Hmm? Doesn't mean you're lost. But people who know him a at least a little bit have begun to see how big he is, how vast he is. In the New Testament right here, it says, verse 28, wherefore we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. It talks about how that soon and very soon, everything that can be shaken on this planet is going to shake. And the earth is not going to survive it in its current condition. The very atmosphere, the very, our, our breathable atmosphere is going to roll away like a, uh, a scroll. And fire is going to melt the very surface of the planet. There's not even going to be any more oceans when it's over. Evaporated, I guess. But God's going to fix it. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's going to fix it. But he said, Wherefore receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God. Come on, New Testament. How are we going to serve him acceptably? How? The only way you could have dealings with God the way you ought to is with reverence. And godly fear. Everybody say godly fear. Godly. Now here's where we need to distinguish. There's a devilish fear. Right. And there's nothing in it but torment and panic. We've been delivered from that. Hallelujah. We don't have to live in tormenting fear. But that doesn't mean you don't have a godly fear. People say, well, that's, that's just reverence. That's not talking about fear. No, look it up. It includes both to revere and to fear. But the Lord, the Lord uses a word. What kind of fear? Godly. There's a godly. Let me help paint a picture for you. 
You're out picking berries in the wilds of Alaska. <laughs> Just having a great time. Yeah. And you hear a, a grunt and you look over and there's a 10 foot tall, 1,000 pound Kodiak, brown bear. Yeah. And he's looking you dead in the eye. Now, if you remember everything you've learned about walking by faith, you know you don't want to just panic and go into fear. But at the same time, how casual are you going to be? Huh? Next to this thousand pound behemoth, you can smell his breath from here. Are you going to be, ah, it's just a bear. <laughs> it's a bear. Nothing to worry about. No, you're not. <laughs> it's going to take everything you got to get from squealing like a little girl <laughs> and to use your faith hmm? and believe God. <laughs> Whew. Let's say you're you're out here swimming along in the Gulf. <laughs> Just having a good time. And all at once you see a shadow over here. And you realize it's a 20 foot shark. <laughs> what are you going to say? Here, sharky, sharky. <laughs> oh, man. Huh? <laughs> You're swimming along out in the Pacific, just having a good time, maybe paddling along on your surfboard. And you hear this sound and you look up and it's a 300,000 pound, 90 foot long blue whale. And you wonder if he's got any idea that you're even there. Because if he moves his tail too close to you, you're done. How casual are you going to be about that? How casual? Hmm? By casual, I mean showing or feeling no concern. No. Phyllis and I years ago were down in the place and a whale came up. Man, he must have been, how far couple of football fields away, at least. And that was too close for anybody. <laughs> I thought, wow, those things breach and come out of the water. Yeah, cover a mile. You never seen anything that big in your life. You're thinking, oh, we're too close. We're too close. We're way too close <laughs> to this. And for you to chat and go, oh, yeah, blue whale, I'd go kiss him on the face. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Hey, Bluey, how you doing today? Yeah, you ain't been there. That's right. <laughs> you ain't been there. I don't say you have to panic and lose your mind and yield to wrong fear, but being in the presence of that kind of power and that kind of size and that kind of might is going to affect you. It's going to influence you. You're going to go, <laughs> ooh. How many know the one who made them? is far bigger, yes. far stronger, far wiser, vaster. He is so big. And when you really, you quit being religious and goofy yeah. and you really begin to get to know him, you don't become morbid, you don't become depressed. You're walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know you don't have to be afraid that he's just going to blast you into nothingness. You know you don't have to be afraid that he's going to cause judgment to come on you because of your sin because that's already happened. It came on Jesus. Yes, Amen. yes it did. And you do have a right to come to the throne room. Amen. You're his very own child. And you can call him Father. And he does call you child. But when you realize where you are and who he is, it takes on another dimension. Yes. 
And you're just, you're just in awe. And when that reality begins to emanate from you in showing him respect, you know what happens? What did he say? What did he say he's going to do? He's going to manifest himself to you and he tells you to do something and you say, sir, yes, sir. And you do it and you act like he is God and you act like, like your Lord really is your Lord and he is your boss and you do what he say. He didn't have to explain it. You just do it and you do it immediately. You do it the best way you know how. What's going to happen is God's going to become more real to you than he has ever been. He's going to unfold and unveil what should happen when we see more of him. Our reverence should just come up some more. Is that right? When we step back and go, whoa, I thought he was big, but look at there. <laughs> Listen to that. Look at that. And you show even greater reverence and greater respect. What's going to happen next? You're honoring him. He's going to honor you, and you'll go, ha, ha, woo. And some folks, you try to explain it to, and they look at you like you are nuts because they don't believe it. They don't respect it. And, so, and you can't show it to them. If they won't respect it, there's no way you can explain it to them. There's no way you can show it to them because they have to decide to show respect to themselves. Make plans to join us for the Greater Faith Conference 2015 with Brother Keith Moore at Faith Life Church in Sarasota, Florida, February 2nd through the 6th. Join us each evening for wonderful services where you will experience the life-changing Word of God through the teaching of Keith Moore. That leaves all day to enjoy the sights and sounds of the Florida Suncoast area. Start off 2015 by getting built up in faith and attending the Greater Faith Conference at Faith Life Church in beautiful Sarasota, February 2nd through the 6th.